So you want to go, eh? <laughs> Welcome back to the Double D Ranch here in Northern Michigan. Uh, my name is Nicole and I'm one of the owners here. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to our channel and maybe share it with your friends. It would do our ranch some greatness. We've been uh, here about two, two years now and uh, trying to help everyone out um, learn along with us as we establish our homestead here. Northern Michigan and um, so yeah so if you would please subscribe to our channel help us reach a thousand subscribers it would greatly help the farm out um, and help us bring more videos to you guys so this video is going to be all about goats um, it's kidding season and we see and this is Maggie this is uh, one of the dolings from Maisie May and uh, we are keeping her but everyone sees all these baby goats right now and everyone's thinking about goats and I get the question, okay, I really want one of your goats. What do I need to do? So I've been asked to make this video to kind of help those people out. First of all, you gotta decide what kind of goat you want. We breed mini Nubians here on our ranch, homestead, farm, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, I love the floppy ear goats. But you have to figure out which kind is right for you. So you you go do your research on what kind of goat you want. And then I'll help you get to know what you need for them. So, isn't she gorgeous? This is Maisie's finale baby. Because we're not breeding Maisie anymore. She's seven. She'll be eight next year. And we think it's just, yeah, we think it's time for your mom to, to retire, don't we? So this is Green Gables Amazing Hope finale. Or Maggie is what we call her. <laughs> Do you want to go? Huh? Uh, so after you figure out what kind of goat that you want, you need to figure out, okay, what do I need to do now? Um, I got this baby goat coming or adult goat or whatever coming. What do I need to make their lives the best that they can be. Um, a lot of people just get goats, put up some fencing they think will work and just let them loose. And that's it. Go feed them once a day, give them water, whatever. Goats are actually very finicky creatures, I've come to find out. And I will take you along on what they need to make their lives the best that they can be. First of all, if it can't hold water, and goats will try and play and they're very curious creatures as we can see because Maisie is trying to knock my thing down. Anyways, if it can't hold water, it can't hold a goat. So you want to have like Fort Knox kind of fencing up to hold your goats in. We use the, and like high, because I've seen goats even jump the four feet um, high fence and uh, you know, that's what we use. But um, we use the red brand, I think it's called, um, goat and sheep fence, and it's four feet high. And then we uh, use some cedar posts and some P post, um, and we've had really great luck with that. And then we use the gates, the, we use eight foot gates to get the tractor in and out, and then just some lock gates. Um, <laughs> he doesn't know if he wants to be fat or not. But I'll show you that. So this is our fencing. Uh, we have the cedar post and then the red barn sheep and goat fence. It's like a four inch square opening right here. And you see. And we also want it because they will scratch themselves on it. So you want to make sure it's not going anywhere because they like to scratch and get all of their fur out on them. So yeah. <laughs> There's Miss Maisie May and her finale babies. Maggie and Miguel. So, 
And then you want something for them to play on. You can see Mr. Cody is um, showing you how we use wooden spools for them to climb on. So they are mountain animals. They like to climb and they can do it quite well. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff we have around here. So old playground equipment and everything is just, they love it. And they'll even uh, jump on you. I think she's like sitting right here next to Miss Aurora. Can you demonstrate that for us? Hi, baby. No? You're not going to do it? Huh? Oh, here she goes. Ready? No? You're going to make a liar out of me. If you have bucks and does, you could have a weather and doe together. A weather is a castrated male which can't produce. But if you put a fully intact male in with your does, this is what you're going to get, babies. Um, so you need an area for the bucks when you're not breeding and an area for the does when you're not breeding. When you want to um, put them together, ah! okay, when you want to put them together um, and make babies, you do when you don't want babies you separate them so over here on the other side of the pasture that's all of our that's all of our bucks and their own little buck house and then over here we have a gate right there that separates this big pasture right here into two we can pasture it off and it lines up with <clears throat> the barn right here we have two sections in there that we can section them off. You do need a four-sided structure for um, goats. They're not like horses. They hate rain. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're goat or they're mountain slash um, desert. So I think they think they're gonna melt when they get wet. So you do need a four-sided structure. And then here in northern Michigan, it gets really cold in the winter. So you just want a nice straw or pine shavings or something that they can all haul up together um, and stay warm. Because they're sissy. They're not made for a rainbow chair. So, whoa! <laughs> um, back to that mountain climbing. Um, anyways, you want to keep them out of the rain, out of the weather, out of the cold. and give them lots of stuff to play on because they really like that. <laughs> so goats are herd animals. Um, you need at least two. We will have 16 by the, <laughs> by the end of this kidding season of the summer, we'll have 16. Right now I think we have like, let's see, almost 30, just because we have so many babies, but all but one are going to new homes. And then we bought two that'll be coming to our arms to live. So. Um, they will get really depressed if there's only one. They need at least two. two. More than two would be even be greater because they need someone to talk to. Maybe they're going to get mad at somebody and they need someone else to talk to. Huh. Anyways, you'll find even in my herd I have um, a couple that click really click together and then they like they have their own clicks. Goats are addicting too, so make sure you uh, know that before you get in there. Because once you have a couple, you see other ones that I think are so cute, then you gotta have another one. Look at this big old boy. He was the first one born, huh, this year. Yeah, you were. And people say don't treat them like puppy dogs, but oh my goodness, you guys, look at How could you not? So let's go see what else we need um, for these creatures to keep them happy and healthy and just living their best life ever. Huh. Because we're actually finicky creatures, aren't we? Yeah, we gotta have everything just perfect. So let me show you what I give them. Lots of socialization with your goats too will make them more friendly and all the other chores that you have to do with them 
um, will make it 10 times easier than it would if you didn't socialize with your goats. Um, there are some that just are still really skittish no matter how much I stay out here and you have to you have to um, chase them down and they sound like they're getting murdered and everything so just proper socialize, socialization with your goats and make them more friendly and more trustworthy of you um, will make your chores with them so much easier. Good. And this one, I'm talking about your mother. Her mother is Okay, so feeding. Goats are browsers. They don't graze all day long like sheep and cattle. They like to search the area and get leaves or weeds from different areas. Um, so in that case, my uh, goats like the sec or the first cutting of hay. It just has like more weeds when they pick through it. It does create a lot of waste, but that's what they prefer. My goats anyways. Um, in addition to hay, they get um, some grain. Right now we're doing a dairy, like a dairy mix because we are in kidding season and they're all freshening, which means they're producing milk and we're milking them and they're feeding babies. So they get some, uh, let's see. Uh, they get alfalfa. I throw in some calf man right there. It's got a lot of nutrients and stuff, extra nutrients. If man will get out of the way right here, it is expensive, um, but it's supposed to help with their production. Um, we have some barley, some rolled oats, or not rolled oats, whole oats, um, black oil, sunflower seeds. That really helps with their coat. Um, and they really like it, and it has extra calcium in it. Uh, we also put in, what else? I think that's it right now. I, I think something's missing because I was out. Oh, um, beet pulp. We also put some kelp in there too. I also throw in some of um, this. It's a uh, flaxseed, goat skin and coat. This after the winter, their coats are just, I don't know, they got their old coats and they end up getting dander from the winter. And I just like their nice shiny coats. So here we're gonna shave them because it's um, show time. And we're gonna do the virtual show this year. So I want them to look their best. So hopefully that'll help between the black oil sunflower seeds and the flax seed. It'll help with their coat, make it more shiny and pretty. I did forget to add that uh, we give our goats grain and hay, but we also let them out in the summer. We have the Premier One electric fencing net, and uh, we fence out an area, and they just get to roam the area and forage for whatever they want, and they really like that. So that is an option too for you in the summer. And it would probably um, lower the cost of your hay bill too. Um, what else do you need for goats? So, goats need some mineral. Um, I just give them some loose mineral. Um, they get get it whenever they want it. Um, we are deficient in selenium and copper in our soil here in Michigan, and those two are um, essential. Sorry, I'm watching them eat and trying to think at the same time. So those are essential to their diet. Um, a lot of times if you are um, kidding and they are deficient in selenium, you'll get a muscle wasting disease and the kids will just come out all like weak and you just got to give them some extra selenium and it really helps them out. <clears throat> they also get bloated in their ruminants, so we give them baking soda. It helps with their bloat. Um, they just, I don't know how, but they know when they need it and they go get it um, whenever they want. With, with the baking soda and the minerals, it's all free choice. We have them in a little thing that separates between the two. And we also have a selenium block out there. Um, so they, I see them looking on that all the time and it really helps. I haven't used this balancer yet. I found it 
give it a try. It's got 20% protein and protein's really good um, with their milk production, especially right now because we're doing milk cast. I haven't used it yet, but I think I'm gonna try. What else? Okay, now we um, talked about copper. So about every three months, the writing on this is kind of bleached out, but it's Ultra Cruise. I get it off Amazon. It's, um, I just did them all yesterday, so we're empty, but they're little, tiny, and not tiny. They're huge horse pills, and they have little rods of copper in them. And you use this, call a bolusing gun, <clears throat> and you put the copper in there. I also use some Jump Start um, probiotics, because everyone can use some good bacteria in their gut. Um, especially Miss Maisie May because she has that foaming. She gets really foamy from the hay for some reason. I don't know. Anyways, I put it in there and it helps hold the pill in there. And then you put it back inside of their throat, push this down, and it goes down into their stomach. And all those copper rods lodge themselves into the lining of the stomach. So I showed you the jump start. I also give them this probiotic goat paste. Um, it's always good, especially when you bring new, um, when you're traveling, because their guts can get upset because of that. Um, when they get sick, anything that stresses them out, you want to give them a good pri uh, pre prebiotic paste. Um, this is also a selenium gel we give them. Um, when they're pregnant, just to make sure the kids come out good. And then vitamin B paste. We give them sometimes if they need a little extra oomph or if they're just, you know, not being themselves. This can kind of perk them up. I don't know if I let any, left anything out as far as um, nutrition for them. It's not just throwing them out letting them eat whatever uh, they they really have they're really finicky actually you can really disturb their gut and make them really sick and it it is a struggle for me for somehow just to keep everything balanced I want my goats to be the healthiest they can be and look the greatest so I don't know it's just I just feel like I'm always chasing them round circle okay so, what else? Um, since we're doing health, um, once a year, um, your goats are gonna get their vaccine. It's called CD&T. It fights against uh, an overeating disease and tetanus. Um, babies get it twice um, before they leave my farm, and then they'll get it once a year um, annually as a booster. I also keep around some LA2000, it's an antibiotic, it's a oxytetracycline and some penicillin just in case they do get um, sick or they get wounded. This will help um, so they don't get really bad infected and even sicker. Um, let's see. Also some, um, this also, I found this udder bone. Um, not only do I put it on their teats when we milk, but it also has, um, and an antiseptic and some clove oil which helps with pain so i found this is really cool so i just all animals here i find a little cut or whatever i put it on there and it just seems to heal really nicely you also need some needles that go on a lure lock syringe to draw off your medications so the medications i found these at home depot actually during the pandemic they're 75% alcohol wipes, so instead of like spraying alcohol on something, I just take one of these bad boys out, wipe the syringe top or the medicine top, and then where I'm going to give the injection so they don't get infected. Okay, so we talked about overeating disease um, and tetanus. I also get my herd tested annually for C. A. and Yonis. Um, you can research that. That's something that is spread throughout the goat herd, sorry. And um, if your breeder has tested for that, you know you got a good breeder. So we do that once a year. We draw their blood and send it out to a lab. Um, every 
every spring I also put this ultra bus on them um, during the winter they can get lice it's a goat only type of lice humans can't get it but it's just a pain as would it be if you were um, to get it yourself um, it also controls against flies and not sure about ticks but this stuff I put it on them <clears throat> before spring and so far no lice Also, to do with cuts and stuff, we also keep this uh, silver spray. It's an aer aerosol bandage in the blue coat. Um, those also are antiseptics and then keeps the germs out. So about every week, eight weeks or so, um, goats need their hooves trimmed. Um, I put mine up on the milk stand, so that would also be help helpful for you to have. Right Here's my milk stand. Um, just keeps them in place. I give them some grain at the stand and then I just snip their their hooves. Um, they like grow over and it can just affect the way they walk. And if you had one shoe that was unlevel compared to the other foot, you know, it would be uncomfortable for you. So you just gotta make sure that their hooves are good. <clears throat> what else? So we shave their udders when they kid or before they kid. It just kicks, um, keeps everything clean and then we'll shave them, sh shave them for show. Um, this is a wall stable pro. The lion, this is not my good one. This. Oh yeah, this is my good one, sorry. Um, the blades right here come attached and this is a 10, this would be like, for their um, teats, it's really close to shave. And then I have other ones that just go in there. And I found this really, um, this is really a good one if you want to spend like the $300 for the ENDs. Brush mine. This gets out the undercoat before we actually shave them. It's really nice. I found it at Aldi actually. Uh, other things that you need if you're going to milk, obviously, hand milking, you'll need a pail. Um, I also use it in the house actually. It's bite back. I haven't brought it out here yet. Um, I just got a new supply through Amazon. Um, it's uh, chlorhexidine and it just is like an antiseptic and it helps close the teats up so you won't get uh, mastitis. Okay, so new this year, I've seen everybody using these, these teat dippers. Um, one you can put like iodine in or the milk teat dip that they have at like tractor supply. Um, I don't know why the color is weird all of a sudden. But we're going to use these before you fill it up and you squeeze it and then the liquid goes in there and then you deep dip each tea to clean all the yuckies off before you milk. So we need a milk stand if you're going to milk obviously. Um, this is ours. Erin made it. And then I was gifted a simple pulse so I no longer hand milk. But if you're gonna hand milk, you need a um, a bucket, obviously, to put your milk in. But I was really blessed and got one simple pulse handed to me or gifted to me. And then if you're gonna also breed, we this bud. Um, this is a Reinhardt this butter. Um, it just burns the horn buds off the babies. Um, I've seen way too many tragedies happen with horns and domesticated goats. So that's why we do it here. And then we also have a just budding box. Um, the babies go in there and their heads stick out right here and then they get just budded. But we're all good for the year. Uh, I bought this. I'm going to use it for show. It kind of just take their collars off and then Okay, what we also do um, as part of our back yearly vaccine um, is deworming them. Um, I use the ivermectin injectable and you go by this fine dose. Um, 
and it seemed to work the best so far. Um, I've also used Safeguard and that works great too and that's actually um, safe obviously for a lot of things that the ivermectin wouldn't be. So yeah, so CD and T deworming the goats every year just like you would a dog. So goats are not just throw them in mine anyways. A lot of people do. Um, and I don't, I don't know how they do it because my goats, I guess, are, I think they're very well taken care of and um, they just don't throw them out in the yard. And, okay, eat what you find because a lot of times they'll get very sick that way. Um, if there's anything I left out, um, mess or, or comment down there and I can try and answer it for you. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I'm missing right now. So I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. Um, I know I've learned a lot from YouTube and also um, go on Facebook and there is a ton of goat groups. Um, I belong to one that's strictly the breed that I, <clears throat> I have and then I have, I belong to a couple um, goat just just random goat ones like all breeds. I belong to one just about hooves and I belong to one just about dairy testing and tips and tricks and the mini Nubian group and the mini Nubian group in Michigan. So go on Facebook. There is a bunch of people out there that are more than willing to um, help you out. Also get some good goat friends, good goat mentors. Um, I have like two or three of them and I also made some really great friends along the way. Goat people are just the nicest people you'll ever meet. Um, we have some other animals on our farm and some of the other people that have those kinds of animals. They're just not as nice as the goat people so I don't know. Goat people? That's weird. Crazy goat lady. But anyways. Um, I hope this video has helped you out a lot. If it has, please like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Maybe share it to all your other goat friends. Um, it would really help our channel and the farm out a lot. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day. See you on the next one.